Hi, I'm Rosie. And I'm Jim. And this is Cruising Sea Venture. We're taking the summer of 2017 to cruise the waters of British Columbia. In this episode, we travel from Princess Louisa to Campbell River. Here is a long line of vessels departing Princess Louisa and heading for slack tide at Malibu Rapids at 6 a.m., the early morning departure. All right, here's the deal now. In our very short video career, we've already taken you through three different places that we talked about having to go through at slack tide. Um, and the, the first one was Deception Pass, and then, what was the second name? Boiler. Boiler passed out of the Gulf Islands and then Malibu Rapids to get to Princess Louisa. And then this morning we left Princess Louisa and we got at Malibu Rapids at 6.03 a.m. exactly on slack. It was like a bathtub. It was so boring we didn't even film it. And I know it's easy to watch all those and maybe you're thinking, like what's the big deal it's just a narrow spot the water looks fine and you try to videotape a little bit of current and in the end nothing shows up in, in on the on the tape and if you're thinking that that that's okay in fact it's a good thing in fact we're going to call it like a compliment because that means we were there in sea venture at right at the right time right at slack water when there's absolutely nothing worthwhile to see and then we just putz through. Totally boring, except it's a little narrow spot maybe. So when we left today, what we did is we cruised to Egmont Village where there's a little marina. And we tied up to the marina, and now we've done a five, five about five kilometer hike to Seachelt Rapids and the Skookumchuck Narrows. And, and so we could actually be at an overlook at Rapids, not when it's slack water when Sea Venture can go through, but at the exact opposite time when the water's moving. And we picked this rapids for a couple of reasons. One, you can actually get to it. A lot of the rapids are in pretty remote locations. And this one, there's a park, and so you can walk to it. And there's an overlook. And the second reason is that it happens to be the, the second fastest tidal rapids in the world. So we're at Seashell Rapids, Skookumchuck Narrows, Sea Ventures upstream, about uh, up the channel, about five kilometers, uh, very well tied to a dock. We don't. Yeah, we really don't want to see her come floating by. That would be bad. That would be bad. And so here is uh, the Narrows when you don't come through on your boat. But what it looks like um, every six hours. It does this for six hours one way. And then it suddenly turns around and right at slack tide you can go through as the boat and then it whips it six for six hours going the other way so four times a day it goes right now it's a flood it's flooding into seashell inlet yep and um so we're here to check out the flood tide yep yeah i think i think we read that the water level at one end of the sea level at one end of the narrows compared to the other can be as much as nine feet difference so here's the seashell rapids when you do not come through in Sea Venture.
he's on high alert. Cruising to our next destination, Jedediah Island. All right, so we're filming Good Morning. What time is it? It it's is 1.40 a.m. Sunday morning, Monday morning. Monday morning, sound asleep in bed, and uh, got woken up by the wind. Um, went to bed, it was calm. I thought it was gonna be a calm evening, but we're kind of in a little bit of an exposed anchorage and got up and the wind is blowing 15 to 20 knots. So, um, hmm, 15 to 20 knots. Uh, we're gonna sit right here in the helm chair with the uh, main computer navigation on, anchor alarm on. So I think it's gonna last a couple, three more hours. Looks like on the weather. Here's our Noble Tech, and we heard to see, but we have a little anchor alarm around the boat at anchor. And uh, if we get outside of the circle, you will know about it. That, 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 that's about it, yeah. Huh, the joys of boating, but it's okay. We'll just hang out here in the pilot house and uh, look out the window, which is actually pitch black because we're in the middle of nothing. All right, talk to you later, bye. All right, here's a story to tell of what not to do when you're boating. Last night, as we shared with you, it was kind of windy. And it, actually it's still a little windy now, but it was in the 15 to 20 knot range. And we were keeping an eye on things. And there's Sea Venture anchored out in a very shallow bay. But during the night, unbeknownst to us, our little red dinghy went for a ride and she cruised all along here until she got to this little nook here. And it was high tide at the time, so she was higher up, close to not quite where those trees are, but her nose was stuck in here. So when Jim and I got up this morning, he went for a dinghy ride in the big dinghy to try to find the little dinghy because we hadn't tied her off well. So lesson learned, use two lines, and uh, if it's windy out, maybe put them up. Anyway, we got awful damn lucky, and we're really grateful to have our dinghy back, and really glad this little ruck was here to stop her transit out this passage that could have made it much more difficult to find her. Once more, we got really lucky. Jedediah Island is a marine state park only accessible by boat. It has a hundred year old homestead on it that remains today. This is part of the wheat field that was planted in its day. You can see the barn, the orchard, the feral sheep and the old homestead. Here's a view of Home Bay. It empties out during low tide. I kind of wonder if that catamaran knew about that. walking through the trail in the forest that it was very light. All of the underbrush had been eaten by the feral goats and sheep on the island. The goats and sheep had been left here for the last hundred years. Look at the string in the back. The wind continued to blow at Jedediah Island, so we picked up the anchor, cruised in about 20 knots of wind north to Musket Cove, which we thought would be a much better anchorage and turned out to be.
All right, we're at Malcolm Island, and we anchored here for the night last night. And this is a little islet that at high tide is an island and at low tide is not. I'll give you kind of a round the world look here. And you can see Sea Ventures tucked way back in that cove back there. You'd think she's on the rocks, but she's doing just fine. And you can see we still have our little red dinghy. Hooray! Correction, we're at Musket Island. And this is pretty much, I think, the park facilities. And then other than that, it's this island that you can play on. Here's what it looks like around here. You can see it's a really low tide. And right now it's not an island, but at high tide it is. Um, it's probably a two foot tide right now, and I think it'll go up about 14 feet. All right, we gotta check it out. First of the trip, homemade bread on the boat. Smells fantastic. How decadent while boating. Cool. Hamburger buns are in the oven now, so guess what's for dinner? Woo, my favorite. All right, we're hanging out in Cortez Bay. It's a pretty big bay, but we think we found the right spot to anchor here. Um, it's Thursday, we're expecting 25 to 30 knot winds in the next three hours or so. So we'll see, but I think we're well situated, ready to go. All right, here's Trooper getting a, what we call a marinated mouse. It's actually a little toy mouse that is covered in catnip. Come on, big guy. Here we are, we're exiting Cortez Bay. We hid out here for a day and a half because of a storm that uh, picked up yesterday. And this is the entrance. You can see the water's nice and flat now. Yesterday it was white, lots of white caps. So at any rate, I just want to show you the difference a day makes. big city. Not really, but it's a city in the marina for a couple of nights. So the first thing, of course, we got to check out the local pub for a big burger and onion rings, beer, and uh, go to the marine store and get a couple of things. We thought, oh yeah, we needed that. Oops. Oops. And, and uh, uh, some fresh vegetables and that's about it. We got a couple friends coming to meet us, Paul and Judy, for the next two weeks. So that's going to be cool. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna show up here tomorrow, and then we're gonna be off to Desolation Sound. Sunday, anything else? In a little bit, we'll be checking out Camel River, so let you know what we'll see. Yep. In the meantime, take have a, look a beer. At our view. Oh, no, show them our view. Oh, our view, yeah, okay. The view. All right, we're at the Discovery Harbor Center which is adjacent to the Discovery Bay Marina, where we're staying. It's just a big retail tourist area with a big grocery store right all next to the marina. A ton of restaurants and shopping and that kind of stuff. All in walking distance. Here's the Campbell River Ferry heading out. Hi, thanks for watching episode three. We hope you enjoyed it. So coming up on episode four, we're gonna cruise from Camel River through the Inside Passage to Port Hardy over the next couple weeks with our friends Paul and Judy. 
and we're working on a wall map uh, that shows where we've been and where we plan to go and how to film that. So we think that'll be ready for the next episode as well. Anything else? Just our signature sign off? That's yeah, it. So that's wishing you no wind and flat seas. For all Bye. you motorboats out there. Bye. Bye. <laughs>